Thank you all for inviting me today, and it's really a pleasure for me to be here. Um, so I, I usually don't attend events because I focus on my startup, but in this case, I made an exception because to me, this is really, and excuse my French, a way to cut through the bullshit because it gets, to the, gets, gets the job done, and I, it's really inspiring to see the, the speakers before me. And In fact, the only reason I'm here today speaking to you instead of being at the hospital in excruciating pain, it's because antibiotics have worked. So, <laughs> so um, you heard the statistics before that about 50% of jobs are um, expected to be lost in the US within the next couple of decades, but that's not the whole story. Because in reality, that same number is true also for Europe, according to some recent research, and now Nobel laureates, uh, Paul Krugman, Joseph Stiglitz, have come up with similar um, conclusions regarding the whole planet. And I like to show you a picture. Now, this is, this I think is the picture that explains everything. So on the left or on, the, or on your right, you see the US, US motor vehicle operators employed. So this are the, it represents a number of people that their livelihood depends on the motor vehicle industry. Most of them are taxi, truck, and delivery drivers. And on your right, you see the Google driverless car engineers employed. That's about 100 people. So it's, it's a bit like the sun and the earth in comparison. Now, to be fair, if you want to take the global pool of jobs, you can maybe say you know, Tesla and Toyota and all the other car manufacturers and the jobs down the line with app developers and other jobs created on top of this kind of new innovation you can increase that number by maybe a factor of two or even a factor of three, let's say 100,000. Well, if you do the math, you're still about 3.7 million jobs short. So it's true that new technology creates new jobs, but these are very few. They are highly paid and very sophisticated. The vast majority of jobs are destroyed and they never come back. And this time is different because we are displacing jobs at the level of the cognitive skills that we thought was just uh, impossible because AI, robotics, and new developments in very, very sophisticated technologies is doing what humans are different from the animal kingdom, our ability to think, to reason, and to explore, right? And machines now are starting to do that. So it's like you're draining an Olympic-sized pool of jobs from the economy, and you're filling up a children's backyard inflatable plastic pool of new jobs into the economy. So it's just not comparable. Now. I think this is, this is not just a picture of the US motor vehicle industry. This is a picture of any industry, give it enough time. So the same thing that will happen to taxi and, tr and truck drivers will happen to retail stores, will happen to lawyers, will happen to maybe even doctors. Um, it will happen to almost any sector of the economy. It's not a matter of if, it is really a matter of when. And for some, it will be five years. For some, it might be 20 or 30 years. But it's going to happen within a lifetime. So what do we do this? Uh, what do we do about this? Now, whenever you're thinking of a, of a solution to a problem like this, think of it at the systemic level. Uh, there are some techno optimists that like to think that we can work with the machines. We can race with the machines and create new jobs, new opportunities. But if you really think about it, that's only true for the 0.1%, the black swans that we like to create because they innovate, they create an immense amount of wealth. You have companies that employ 50 people and they are sold for $20 billion, like WhatsApp. And the number of employees in new companies is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the new tech giants, the new black swans are employing 50 or 100 people and they are evaluated at 20 or $50 billion, whereas the comparable company in the past had to employ five or 10 million people. So you're making a lot more money with fewer and fewer people that you may even pay them 10 times as much, but they are creating 100 or 1,000 times as much more revenue. So this has an inevitable conclusion. <laughs> the distribution of wealth has changed dramatically over the last uh, 50 years. Yes, it's true that poverty has been decreasing, but the comparative, compar comparative levels relative to the population has been disproportionately uh, more unfair. So 
these are all 25 percentiles. The smallest is so small that it's not even visible, I'm sure, back down there in the room. And the, the richest 25 percentile is so big that I had to just take the richest 2% to kind of show how big that is. It's about half the percent of the entire wealth of the planet, just 2%. And if you take only the top 85, not 85 million or 85 percent, no, no, 85 of those people, 85 individuals, they own more wealth than the bottom 3 billion on the planet. Now, I'm not claiming clearly that automation and <laughs> increased productivity is the only reason. There are many social, economic, political reasons that, and cultural that are very complex. But clearly, it is one factor. And if anything, in the future, it's, it's just going to exacerbate this problem more and more. Well, because you can grow more capital and you can acquire more. And so it, it's a positive feedback loop that increases this level of inequality. So I think. We, 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 we can only change this if we either change the rules or we change the incentives through which the market operates and thanks to which things happen. So if we just tweak intelligently how the incentives for operating a business work, maybe we can change this landscape. And there's also a flip side, because the, this, this immense increase in productivity and automation can lead to pretty amazing results and developments. I mean, just think of the fact that now we have a, a plethora of small AI, narrow AIs, that are very specific to solving uh, per very determined purposes that are now being opened up to the world. IBM Watson has opened up its APIs to developers. Um, Google has acquired about 20 new startups one of them for about $600 million, DeepMind, specific for kind of high-level thinking and problem solving. And we can maybe solve any challenge if we work with these new technologies and these new AIs that are now being democratized and opened up to the world. So we can solve pretty much any challenge given our collective wisdom in combination with new technology, specifically AI, but none of this matters if we don't address the problem of the system can collapse as a byproduct of something we didn't expect, the black swan events. Now, the world is a complex, interconnected grid, a graph, with non-trivial relationship to feedback loops. So if we let this trend continue, without understanding uh, where it's going to lead, the whole thing might collapse very quickly. So just imagine a society where you have a middle class that is quickly disappearing. There are hundreds of millions of people completely displaced. They don't have a job. They have no hope of acquiring a new job because jobs that they would be capable of doing are also being displaced about at the same time or just shortly after. And uh, these are a lot of angry, desperate people who used to be rather well off just maybe a decade or two prior to that moment. So what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna be happy and pacified? No, I don't think so. I mean, if we want to avoid a systemic collapse, before we can explore <laughs> all the human potential and, and, and space and do amazing things, we could probably do that uh, even if, as the system is collapsing, but there is a possibility of a global catastrophe. And we need to start thinking about this issue in very serious terms. So we, we shouldn't fool ourselves with the rhetoric that people will find something to do. Or we should have faith that the system uh, will work, that the problem is going to fix itself. It maybe will. I don't think it will, actually. I think it won't. If you wait and see, by the time you realize it, it will be too late. So some have suggested, and I'm going to conclude this with this thought, that the way to solve this problem might be to discard all outdated ideologies. So don't think about capitalism or socialism or left or right. Just think about solutions, all right? And with a fresh new mind, a fresh new view, transcending outdated ideas and instead improve on them to create something completely new. So one such suggestion is to decouple income and work. 
And there are some nice and very interesting technologies that we can look at. For example, blockchain-based cryptocurrencies and distributed autonomous organizations, which are a kind of a narrow AI, um, for creating a system of unconditional basic income. But this is just one of the many suggestions, and we can talk about more in the breakout session. Now, I will not sweet talk you in choosing this X prize over someone else, uh, because th th this, this topic is very complex. Right? It, uh, there are lots of social factors that are interplaying, and it might, it might be one of the most challenging X prizes to be ever designed. Uh, but it's also probably one of the most fun, because um, it's this, I think this is more of a foundational X prize. If we get this right, we'll have the social cohesion to be able to capture all the cognitive surplus and the potential of human creativity, and, it, and, and we can have a thriving society with which we can solve any challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you.